Hello YouTube. It's 2.49 p.m. I showed up to work today about 42 minutes late. And there was heavy traffic going through the airport, which didn't help that situation either. So I've got a brand new up-down driver on the left side of me. Seems like there's a lot of new people lately, and I've just been so in my own world that I haven't been paying attention to it. Today, gosh, I don't know the date. Let me bust out one of the Obama phones and check the date really quick. I'm pretty sure it's Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday, November 8th, 2023. I'm trying to get a Chevy Suburban out of a rather tight spot. This one's going to glass, but I notice it also... Um, needs an oil change so I think I'm going to put it in the oil change area that way the shop can handle that and then when the oil change is clear I can move it over to glass um, not sure how it happened there's an incident report but usually those things are handwritten and illegible so well they're always handwritten usually illegible but yeah the uh, lift gate in the back the rear window is completely smashed out of this that's what they've got it flagged for in the uh, a van stopping on my left. That's an odd place for the van to stop. And Jesse waved at me. I'm blown away by how well Jesse and I get along these days. It just doesn't seem that long ago that I almost quit because I just couldn't stand being around him. Well, I just noticed in my rearview mirror I can see one of the connectors for the rear defrost just sort of dangling where it broke away from the rear window now it's got an odd coiled cable you know so it can flex and connect when the window goes up all right i got Winola offering me some kind of a shift for thursday that won't be happening because i'm pretty sure i'll still be working here on thursday got the crew working on the supercharger area and they're making some notable progress today and finally we've got enough forms in place that I can see how many superchargers are going to go in. Now I've only seen four unpackaged, well they're not completely unpackaged but they're kind of unpackaged and I've been really curious how many are going to go in because obviously it's going to be more than four, at least I was pretty sure it would be more than four especially considering it's the size of the area that they're working on. But until today, it's been impossible to tell. So I'm eager to go by there and take a look. Not that I'm going to stop and bug them when they're working, but I'm sure the next time I drive by there, I can slow down and count the uh, little wooden forms I put together to hold the conduit. Um, and they use some like really big plumbing, like that big around, almost like you'd use for... Uh, sewage plumbing as electrical conduit which makes sense when you consider how heavy the voltage is and um, how many electrical connections are going through quite a few cars in the PM line right now, but I still think it'll be worth it to put this in that line, especially considering the shop's going to be running until 8 o'clock and glass is already gone for the day. At least I think they're gone for the day. I don't think I see them. It's very rare for them to still be here when I get here, especially that day when I show up damn near 45 minutes late. And reason for me being late, typical shit, just tired, not wanting to wake up. Oh, you've got to be kidding. The gold Hyundai Elantra is back in the shop line. Third time I've seen it there since I've worked here and I became kind of aware of that unique car. All right, just found Keontae, so I guess I'm connecting up with him. He wasn't on the check-in uh, list as being here, but the check-in list has been missing for well over a week, so it's possible he didn't need to look for one when he came in. It's also possible it wasn't there when he came in.
So yeah, you don't see me too well in this. That's just where the cup holder is in a Toyota Corolla. Four o'clock straight up. And this one's got a G stop on the side. I'm over in the dollar return, so it hasn't been moved to the maintenance line yet, but there's nothing at the maintenance line, so uh, I'm taking this. Over to retail, that's what G-STOP stands for. I'm kind of amazed I've memorized all these codes. And to be honest, I don't think I've memorized all the codes, but I've certainly memorized a lot of them. So, mostly work with Keontae um, from the end of the last clip. He stayed a little bit later than normal, but not too much. Said he's going to talk to one of the managers. I'm not even sure who he's talking about. I think he said Dave. I don't know who the hell Dave is. Well, he said he's going to, must be a day shift person. <laughs> he said he was going to talk to Dave about working with me tomorrow night. So hopefully that works out. That'll be nice. I like working with Keate. happy to listen to little Kanye West. So, yeah, he said that this manager, Dave, and I'm not even sure who that is, is cracking down on people showing up late. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm, I kind of got a reputation for showing up late at this point. And um, I'm not too worried about that. I'm... I'm the only one here who does what I do at night, and they would be hard-pressed to train somebody to replace me, at, at least with any kind of quickness, especially when it considers all the kind of extra things that I do, but that doesn't mean I'm going to continue like, not trying to get here on time, but... I just took this the gatekeeper out of complete habit. Forgot this is going to retail. <laughs> yeah, I'm so good at this. I'm forgetting where the fuck I'm going. Whoops. It's all right. I need to ring. Roll by the O wall. Got three more electric Volvos to put out with the trunks popped over here. I passed him earlier when I was with Keontae. I'll point stuff out that he just doesn't even notice. And, and that's just probably the, just, I don't know, it's kind of the way I am. It's certainly a sign of being on the spectrum. But um, I noticed as we rolled through that they all had temp tags on them. Down in the space where the license plate would be. And then they had the license plates all kind of wedged into the lift gate, like in the space between the roof of the car and the lift gate, just kind of shoved in the crack there, sticking up. I was like, that's an odd place with the license plate. And I kind of figured someone was going to come along and pop the plates on and pop the trucks to them to kick them out, and they did. So I'm going to get those out very soon not sure if I'm doing that next because I'm over at retail and it's a bit of a bit of a drive or a bit of a walk I mean from here to there so my next move ended up being something kind of unexpected um, walking directly across from retail and we've still got the AR line going on which sounds like a weapon thing out of context, but it's, uh... Wow, this is really in here tight. 
I think I got this though. I'm in a pull start too, by the way. Anyway, I, I, I always kind of try to maintain the, the AR line, also known as the on rent line. And we often get up down drivers that don't understand what that line is, and they'll put electric dirties over there, and that's what this is. So I'm moving it over to the correct spot, which is just right over here. So not much of a move at all, but hey, it needed done. And while I'm at it, I can check the levels on this. Yeah, if somebody has it on 100 instead of 90, that's not cool. And power it up. Good times. Yikes, way too much fan. Stop that. Hey, this one's a Honda Civic. Interestingly enough, we don't get too many Honda Civics here. 88.3 FM, I don't think so. It's got to be a more efficient way to tune this. They came in with all these slides. And you and I had a chance to look at these. Hate the ones that just don't have a knob to tune it. I have to use buttons on a touchscreen to do that. It's always slow and awkward. Oh, and I don't want to hear about that. Hey, it's the Interpol looking to sell your home fast for top dollar before the holiday. I don't want to hear an ad either. All DC 93.3 Modelo Especial present the 2023 ugly sweater holiday. It's got 41,000 miles on it, so I'm just taking it up to the flip ramp. So I walked back to the AR line, mostly to bump up the cars behind the space where I pulled out that Polestar. And sure as shit, at the back of the line, there was another electric dirty. So many new up-down drivers, and they just don't seem to be training them very well. Actually, I had a really good interaction with um, little Anthony. As I was walking away from moving the second misplaced electric dirty, which was a Tesla Model 3. And I figured I should at least give him an explanation why I was over in the electric, since that's kind of his, his baby. And... And he has a tendency sometimes to get upset when he sees me over there messing with him. And I just told him what was going on with the AR line. And he's familiar with the AR um, problem. He says it has to do with people not checking them in correctly. I don't really think that's it. Not from what it's been explained to me from the various managers. It, it seems to be actually a glitch in Hertz's software doing it as opposed to people not checking them in correctly. But... It's possible that I'm not checking them incorrectly is what's causing the glitch. Anyway, I was letting him know why I was moving those there, and he's just like, yeah, it's all these new people, they're fucking idiots. <laughs> all I can say is, yeah, that part. All right, I got another cracked windshield. And uh, I love the way they labeled this one. It says WS Crack, spelled C-R-A-K. Right, the chains. training for Kyla Murray that you've got to be able to oh, handle. Oh, no, I don't want to hear sports radio. That works. Wow. Got a reality check on how much faster the up down crew moves around than I do. Uh, walking over to this vehicle, I saw the, uh, it was like right there with the up down crew, and talked to Jesse briefly. And as I was just now stopping, waiting to get on the ramp, 
he drove by with that same crew heading up. So, so uh, yeah, they're hustling. That was a good interaction with Jesse, by the way. Um, he just seemed a little curious, like, because like, I walked up right by him, and he seemed a little curious, like I was over there asking, you know, him for something, and he did something, and I was just stepping there to get out of the way of his drivers. <laughs> so I was not a, a, an obstacle for a bunch of new guys that might not be as accustomed to watching for pedestrians, and just told him that. So I walked down that line thinking there'd be some maintenance cars. There weren't. Doing my best to stay out of the way of his drivers for, for the moment. And he smiled. He seemed like kind of smiled and nodded. Like, yeah, it's probably a, probably a good maneuver. But uh, yeah, walking by all the people getting out of the van, there's quite a few new people. And definitely some very attractive women in the crew that's working right now. Although really disappointed, one that I find to be super attractive is wearing a face diaper. So I'm, I'm not sure if she's that cute in the face or not. God knows what that's hiding. Now this is something different. I'm in a brand new Hyundai Tucson. I was thinking it had a completely different looking kind of dashboard, but no, it's actually got a white protective film still covering up the gloss. In fact, it's got quite a lot of protective film on it. Uh, one above the film light, and it's got little baggies on the sun visors. And a little piece of protective film over the door handles and also over the emblem in the steering wheel. I'm awfully curious, and I'm not seeing the keys anywhere. That's not a good sign. Oh, that is really not a good sign. I should not move this until I find the key. Okay, there it is. That was in an odd place. It is a 2024. Yeah, I was thinking this is different than anything I've seen yet. So Hyundai, which has been all about having a screen in the center of the dash, as opposed to real gauges. Yeah, there's definitely been some consumer backlash on that because this has real gauges and just a small screen in the middle. I really didn't see Hyundai doing that, but they have. Yes, so there is rough right here. So it's got a uh, note in it. Printed note for me to decide what to do with it. And it's got a code that I've never seen before. I forget exactly what it said, but something along the lines of pending install. So I'm just kind of going by something that Carter told me the first week I started, which is that this line is for everything else. And uh, that's definitely in everything else. I'll put it in the pink line, by the way. This is neat. It's the first time I've seen a 2024 Hyundai Tucson. I definitely like what I see. I like that it's gone to real gauges in the in the dash, and it's a really nice look. And uh, four miles on this vehicle. It's got a Sirius XM subscription on it. That's pretty cool. See what's on the FM. Oh, it's got that interface that I'm pretty much used to for Hyundai and Kia radios with the HD radio on it. So HD radio and XM radio. Instead of a knob, it's got a little scrolly up, up and down thing. It's not bad. Not what I'm used to, but it's not bad. HD radio was turned off. I turned it on. And, uh, as much as I love Paul McCartney. Oh yeah. Or KWSS HD. Let's put KWSS HD in the different sense. So I'm thinking these Volvos that have been moving out of here are all brand new vehicles. Being that I saw them earlier with um, 
temp tags in the back and that someone's putting plates on them and this is the first time I've noticed that on these dashboards there's no visible odometer like I can see the battery percentage is 89 percent well when I first got in and it said 90 but yeah, it says 89 percent it says range 220 miles Yeah, I don't see an odometer. I see a map in front of me. A speedometer and a gauge that basically shows how much power I'm consuming or generating if I'm using the regen brakes. And one that shows me what gear I'm in, reverse neutral or drive. And one shows the outside temperature, 86 degrees. And then I've also got a uh, digital speedometer I'm going nine miles per hour. Shows that the speed limit is 20, which I think it's funny how that's integrated. Like, seriously, how does this car know what the uh, speed limit is in this parking lot? Although the Google logo is in the map, so obviously this is powered by Google, which doesn't surprise me. That's how the uh, pole stars are as well, and these are made by the same people. But yeah, no odometer anywhere. I can't believe I haven't noticed that before now. So anyway, I'm rolling these over to, as I've been doing, rolling this over to Electric Dirties. But yeah, I get the feeling that nobody's rented this one yet. And I'm one of the very first people to drive it. Just like that Hyundai I drove a little bit ago. And then it's going up for its very first renter. After it leaves this line. After it leaves this line, we'll go into the uh, car wash and it'll go out into the electric cleans. And since it's at 89%, somebody will take it out and put it in a stall to be rented, most likely into electric reserve. I'm really curious how I find out the uh, mileage on it. System, maybe? So it's got a security update on June 1st, 2023. Yeah, I'm super curious. I just noticed that there's no odometer. In it the is. Dash. Press the, the circle button right here. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I know this is obviously brand new. I'm just bringing it over from, from registration. But... There's going to come a time where we have to sort them out by how many miles are on them, and I'm like, how do I even check this? It's pretty brand new, so... 284. Yeah. So, I, I got a feeling this is probably going on its first rental, because I noticed when I... Earlier, they the guys doing, you know, the reg... Some maintenance, you know. But yeah, the guys on the reg wall were... Uh, they had temp tags on them, and somebody had shoved the plates in the crack between the rear... Uh, the rear door. Oh, and the plate's then, not on? No, the plate's on now. Oh. No, when I came on it earlier, somebody got to talk... I was, I was going through menus trying to figure that shit out. Yeah, the poster is the same thing. The poster? At least I thought it was true. Maybe I'm... Uh, something, but when you know when it turns on, okay. then the poster is the same thing. Uh, it seems like any time I've had it, it's not going to the poster. It's zero. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for that. Well, that was really cool. That was just one of the car washers, by the way. But I love it whenever I can learn new things about vehicles, especially the electric vehicles. And those electric, those electric um, Volvos, I'm, I'm not sure the model number, but I mean, it's all the same that we have. Model name, whatever it is. Yeah, those electric Volvos, I'm quite fond of those. Uh, but, but I was kind of surprised what I saw when I switched the, uh, when he showed me the button to hit and and I brought the odometer and there's a bunch of, bunch of other car stats that popped up in the center of the dashboard as well but I was surprised to see it had about 260 miles on it I figured it was going to be like that Hyundai with a single digit odometer still I'm reasonably convinced that it hasn't been rented yet that all those miles are just in getting the car ready and getting it here
So I'm driving a Dodge. Oh man, I forgot what the hell these are called. It's the the full size, not the oversized, but the full size Dodge SUVs. Oh wow, somebody to the right is yielding for me. Oh, nice. So that person who, who was explaining that to me, he's a car washer, but definitely one of the more, one of the smarter car washers who speaks fluent English, which uh, I appreciate that there are some there. Um, but yeah, he was walking up to the car to, to grab it, take the car wash right then. So, um, Walking out of there, I was headed towards Queens to figure out what to do next. Figured I was probably going to go upstairs, ran into Meyer and uh, gave me the memo that all windshield chips are going to the dollar car wash, which, yeah, I saw that coming. I even mentioned that to Keontae earlier when I was riding with him that when I brought a couple windshield chips down there, that's probably what was going to happen with them. I was going to make an effort to have them organized anyway. And I did mention to him that I, uh, to my, uh, that I saw one that definitely can't go. And, you know, and, and it, which I feel every now and then he needs a reminder that, you know, when he tells people that every windshield chip needs to go here to be cleaned and rented out, that, yeah kind of look a little more closely at it and I was explaining to him that it had you know two pretty good sized spiders that granted the chip crew is going to take care of it not the not the windshield replacement crew but regardless it it can't be rented out it's a safety hazard it obstructs the driver's view at which point he's like oh yeah yeah no keep definitely definitely check them <laughs> but yeah I put I put notes on there to kind of hopefully dissuade any uh, of the up-down crew from moving that one over here. But I know as long as I stay on it, I'll probably be the one that moves all of them. Get a vehicle way in the back of this lot with its hazards flashing. That's odd. see anything in the maintenance line down here. I'm in the, right by the dollar car wash. I don't see any maintenance cars down here, but I do see a couple under the uh, ramp, so I'm going to go check them out. <laughs> 